Let's take a closer look at the transmitter receiver circuits required to establish a wireline link between chips. In addition to the serializer and deserializer, or SIRDES, a lot of additional circuitry is required to complete the transceiver. For example, these two chips may operate at totally different internal clock frequencies. So the receiver needs to perform some clock reco recovery to comprehend the sampling times of the received waveform here. Moreover, in order to combat the frequency dependent losses of the channel and discontinuities and the resulting intersymbol interference, equalization circuits generally appear at both the transmitter and the receiver. The idea here is that the channel exhibits the frequency dependent losses shown here in red, and these equalization circuits exhibit a frequency response that counters that, so that the series combination of the two is the product of the red and blue curves having a flattened or equalized channel response over the entire bandwidth of interest. At the transmitter, equalization is generally performed in discrete time by taking a weighted sum of delayed copies of the transmitted data as shown here. Here the W terms are the tap weights of the transmit filter and together this forms a finite impulse response or a transmit FIR equalizer. Receiver equalization may be performed by a variety of constituent components. It can be performed, for example, by a high pass network in the termination of the transmission line here. An example is shown here. RC components are chosen and combined to form a high pass response as shown here. Active equalization circuits are often also incorporated into the analog front end of the receiver. A circuit like this is quite common. An RC degenerated differential pair offers a frequency response with a low frequency zero that gives rise to a high pass shaped frequency response. Circuits like this are often referred to as continuous time linear equalizers because they operate in continuous time and they're intended to be linear high pass filters on the receive waveform. Compensating a very high amount of channel loss can become very challenging. So to help with that, the symbol rate can be reduced by the use of four levels to encode two bits. So for example, here, if we have a two level signal encoding one bit per symbol with a symbol rate of 20 picoseconds, we can instead use half as many symbols with twice the symbol time, 40 picoseconds, to encode the same amount of information. This type of encoding is called four-level pulse amplitude modulation, or 4PAM for short. And because it reduces the symbol rate by a half, it generally reduces the Nyquist loss that needs to be compensated by the equalizers. 4PAM is used in most electrical modern links exceeding 50 gigabits per second. Now, digitizing the received waveform allows for very accurate discrete time equalization using digital signal processing or DSP. So for example, if we introduce an A to D in the receiver here, follow that with a parallel DSP, we can perform an FIR equalization and a decision feedback equalization where recovered symbols here are passed through a second FIR filter and used to cancel predicted ISI of future incoming symbols. So this combination of a feedforward equalizer and a decision feedback equalizer is quite common in DSP-based wireline receivers. In some modern wireline links, the combination of a conventional FFE and DFE is insufficient to recover the received waveform. In such cases, maximum likelihood sequence detection is being increasingly used. So here the key insight is to recognize that intersymbol interference is not really noise, it actually depends on the transmitted symbols themselves. So we can use the energy in that ISI to actually boost the signal power that we're trying to detect rather than just removing it, as in, for example, a DFE. The way we do this is to look at the received waveform. Here, consider the received waveform in yellow and compare it to the waveform that we would receive in a noiseless system with all possible combinations of transmitted sequences. So, for example, a particular combination of transmitted sequences we know would give rise to the blue wave shape if we know the channel response perfectly. 
And if we compare that against the actual received waveform in yellow, we see that they don't quite match. Now here we can consider a different candidate transmit pattern and shown in blue. Again, we compare it, we see that it's not a very good match to the actual received waveform. And we do that for all possible sequences of transmitted data at the receiver until we find a sequence that matches the actual received waveform quite, quite accurately. Uh, maximum likelihood sequence detection selects the sequence of transmitted data with the lowest mean squared error as the most likely transmitted one, and then assumes that was the actual transmitted sequence and detects that. It's used as an alternative to decision feedback equalization in BSP-based receivers exceeding 100 gigabits per second, and can provide a performance boost of one dB or more in terms of signal to noise ratio.